Hey everyone, today I'm coming to you with your review on the brand new Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Cosmo Build-A-Figure Waves Star-Lord. That was a mouthful. This figure is not included with a Build-A-Figure piece for the Cosmo Build-A-Figure. He is the one figure in the wave that isn't included with that, and he is the one figure that is packed two per case. He's also the only figure that I was able to find so far from this wave. GameStop Canada, for some reason, only just got him in. They at least get a few figures in normally, but for some reason, in this case, for this wave, they only got him in. The rest of the wave is hitting Walmart, so if I do find them, I will get the reviews up as soon as possible. But for now, let's take a look at this Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Star-Lord. Now, as always, I do want to start off with the packaging. Now, this is, of course, in your standard Marvel Legends of Plastic Free packaging, but on the front, there you have an image of the figure itself and a concept art image of the character in the movie. Star-Lord up top, the logo for the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 movie. Very, very excited for this movie. It's going to be amazing. James Gunn is doing it. We know it's going to be amazing. On the side there, you have the image of the same image of the front of Star-Lord, just a little bit more clear, and the ship that is in the movie, the brand new ship. How many ships have the Guardians have now? I don't know, but now they have a new one. The box ripped. I'm really sad about that, but whatever. On the side there, you have the Cosmo Build-A-Figure, which I'm actually really excited to get, and then the rest of the figures in the wave being Drax, Mantis, Nebula, Rocket, Adam Warlock, and Craglin. On the top, there you have the Guardians logo. There you have the price I paid for the figure. Nothing too much on the bottom, and a different image of the uh, figure on the back. That's actually a really nice image. I love the colors going on there. But other than that, that's all I have to say about the box. So let's get on to the Star-Lord figure himself. Now, for the Star-Lord figure itself, as it stands, I don't really have that much to say about it because the figure is, like, 50% new sculpt and 50% reuse. The reuse being the legs as well as the arms, and that really does bum me out because with Guardians of the Galaxy... They are a massive team. They are so popular, not only in the MCU, but just in entertainment and pop culture in general. And this is going to be the last outing for the team that we know. And a lot of the characters, I imagine, are probably going to be phased out or die. So this is a big deal. This movie is a big deal. And not only with the Marvel Legends line, but also with Lego. I noticed that those sets are kind of... They're not that great, and I'm just a little disappointed in these companies that they're not going all out for this movie because it is a huge deal. Granted, I understand that the MCU just keeps, you know, pumping out MCU movies left, right, and center. Hopefully that'll slow down a little bit as they say they're focusing on quality over quantity. But that being said, I just really wish that they would have put in a little bit more effort with the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 figures here. Some of them in the wave are really, really good, but my problem is they're all in matching uniforms. And then you have someone like Star-Lord and then Drax's lower legs that are all pinned. I just don't get it. And especially when we get all these pinless figures that honestly... For Star-Lord, for this design, those figures that get the pinless designs honestly don't deserve it compared to this figure. This figure really deserves it. But that being said, I gotta kinda say, not to, you know, defend Hasbro, but I do understand the reuse in this case because I was looking at the set photos of this costume in the movie and just the design overall, and it is very, very similar to what we have here. The pants are kind of just this fabric-looking uh, fabric material as it is here, and they look very, very similar. So I do see how they kind of just decided to just reuse the legs. Still bumps me out. The boots are definitely not accurate. They're very different from the ones that are in the actual movie. So, you know, there you go. There's one instance of it not being accurate. And then the arms, the red part here on the actual costume is a little more raised up. And here it's just, you know, the old body. So it's not that great. But that being said, it's not as bad as I was expecting. But for the new parts of the figure, the head sculpt, I have got to say that is easily, easily one of the best just photo real likenesses that we have ever got for Chris Pratt. Not just Chris Pratt, in general. That is so spot on, especially after that horrid Love and Thunder Star-Lord face sculpt. That was absolutely, they looked more like his dad. It looked like more like Ego than uh, Chris Pratt. But in this case, I gotta say, not to rant about the head, the head is absolutely amazing, but this is kind of his Infinity War look, and I'll do some head swaps later, but in the movie, he has a lot more bushy hair, and he kind of just has a more rough look, and this is exactly what he looks like in Infinity War, like identical to his Infinity War look. Still, though, the head sculpt as it stands is absolutely amazing. I want to get a close look at that right there, as you can see. Just absolutely amazing. I honestly don't have a problem with it. My only problem is just the fact that it's, you know, 
not entirely what he looks like in the movie. It's exactly what he looks like in other movies, just not this one. It's a little too clean. But that being said, I still absolutely love it. Looks good on the side. I did get a little bit of glue there, if you can kind of see it on the side of the chin but still not the biggest deal. The beard looks absolutely amazing. Now, the other new part on this figure is obviously the guns, but I'll go over those after. The torso and the lower torso, as well as, I believe, the upper thigh, or not the upper thighs, the uh, hips right here, they are new, and that is because the original figure, I believe, had the pegs for the guns to peg into the legs, but these are a new mold. But I do gotta say, they are new and they do really blend in well with the old part. As you can see, if you kind of line it up properly, that does look very, very good. So at least, you know, the combination of reuse and new parts does look kind of good. But, you know, my main problem is not that it's pinned. It's the fact that the other figures are pinless. And then you're going to have them all together. And some are going to have pins, some are not. It's just... This kind of throws me off. It's not the greatest thing, but as it stands, that does look pretty good. Now, the actual torso does look amazing. You do have that kind of more newer, modern Guardians of the Galaxy logo on the torso, and then this thing going down right here. And as it stands, this is a very accurate torso design, and just, I want to say accurate in general to the figure. A lot of these concept art figures can be very bad. This isn't perfect by any means. Very few MCU figures nowadays are. But it isn't terrible. I do have to say, though, the blue that they went with is a little too light. I would recommend, if you are into customizing, maybe doing a black wash on this whole team, especially in the trailers. They look like they're going to go through hell and back. And these look very, very joyful and colorful for what it is going to be in the movie. On the back, kind of a more bland design, but it does work as well. And then the belt does kind of hover as well. And the waistcut. Oh, yeah, you do have a waistcut. That is good to get. But other than that, the only other thing I really want to go over here is the guns. These are brand new guns. They're essentially just, you know, missing the bottom part of the old guns, which I really like these guns. These are iconic, but these look good too. I'm sure it's accurate to the movie. I do prefer these overall, but I'm excited to see what these will do in the movie. And they do look good. They are identical. When I opened this figure, shockingly, they were like rattling about. They completely fell out of the bag, which was a little unique for the plastic-free boxes, but... Not too big of a deal. But other than that, I think that's all that I really want to go over with this Star-Lord figure. So let's get on to his articulation. Now for the articulation on this Star-Lord figure, it's nothing too crazy. It is what you would expect. But the head goes up that much. Down. Uh, little to no tilt, actually. Full 360. And then this is my main problem with this figure overall is the arms go out that much. That's not, that's not a big deal. But the problem is, on the shoulders, as you can see, there are these two circles on each side. And because of how tight the joint is connecting to the arm, they scrape off. They were completely red, and because of that, they are gone. They are blue. And that is not my fault. I will take blame for if I damage my figures. I will, trust me. But here, there's really no way around it. There's no like weak point in the joint where it wouldn't happen. Any way that you would move it, it would scrape. And that's kind of the problem with them using a new torso and reused arms. It's just, it doesn't combine perfectly. I'm sure they designed the torso knowing that they were going to use uh, these old arms. But if it was a new sculpt, I imagine that wouldn't have been the case. But it's not a huge deal, but just at the price you're paying for these figures, it is a bummer for sure. But anyways, the arms go out that much. Down, full 360, bicep swiveled, double jointed, gross, yucky, pinned elbows. And then the hands go up, down, and full 360 on a horizontal hinge. Should be vertical, but like I mentioned numerous times, hand up from the elbow to the hand actually is complete reuse from the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Star-Lord. Epic. The ab crunch goes down that much. Back, waist cut, full 360. Legs kick forward that much. Back, splits, upper thigh cut, double jointed, knees, and boot rotation, which is good to get. And then the ankles, be careful with these because one of my Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Star Lords, the foot broke by doing this. So just be careful. Goes up that much. It is a little more gummy than that previous one. Uh, Marvel Legends is using softer plastic these days, but still something to note. I don't want to push it all the way back, but up and then ankle rocker pivot. So, you know, kind of expected articulation with this Star-Lord. Now, first for comparisons with this Volume 3 Star-Lord, here we have the Love and Thunder Star-Lord, as well as a kind of customized 
Kit Bash, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Star-Lord. That is because this is the body of the trench coat Star-Lord from the Mantis wave, but I did put the jacket from the Titus Builder figure wave one on because like I mentioned, the foot broke on my Titus wave one, so I, you know, preferred this design overall, so I just put the jacket there. That being said, these arms are different from those, so they aren't the reused ones, but I do assure you that they are the exact same on the actual Titus Builder figure uh, Star-Lord. I don't exactly know where that one is. Is, but what I wanted to show you and what looks really 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 good like almost so good to the fact that I don't want to actually keep this head on the volume 3 one look at this that looks absolutely amazing and it fits like butter it looks great there you can see what I meant about the upper legs there it is a new mold on this figure but that just like wow that looks amazing. I really want to keep that on there. I want to get two of these heads, but I'm not going to buy another one of these figures just to do that. And then for another head swap, like I mentioned, the head sculpt that we do get with this figure is kind of the Infinity War Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 look. And this, I got to say, the Love and Thunder head, even though it is kind of atrocious for, you know, lack of a better term, I gotta say, it does fit pretty well with the design. It is bushier, and he looks like he has been through a little bit more, and you do have the kind of silver comms device on it. So if anything, I don't know if I'm ready to say this, but I might keep this head on this one, and then keep this head on the Infinity War one, and have this on the shelf, and then just, you know, put this in a bin and never to look at it again. Although, that's mean, because this head... You know, not being a great head, still does work, and that's kind of just a weird kit bashed trench coat love and thunder star lord. As you can see, it does have the same legs. You know, they love reusing these legs. But yeah, just a bunch of head swaps. They do work. Experiment with your figures, but I just thought I would show you what they look like. Next up for comparisons, here we have the Volume 3 Star-Lord next to the Volume 1 Star-Lord from all the way back in 2014, as well as the comic book box set Star-Lord. Now, this is actually kind of a similar design to this. I thought I'd compare it because, you know, that's kind of what it's based off of for the Volume 3 movie. But this is a more accurate color. Honestly, I think this would be a perfect color for this. It is very dark, but it is very dark in the movie. And I get it. These are on paper kids toys. So having a lighter color would make sense. But, you know, come on. We want accuracy, us collectors. Now, I do want to do a head swap, even though I know a lot of people were complaining that we don't get the uh, helmeted head with this figure. I don't even think he uses it in the movie. I could be wrong because I haven't seen the movie yet. I mean, I don't think I've seen it in a trailer either, but still, it looks good. You know, it works. Not a, you know, not terrible. I don't know where the Volume 2 one is for the uh, Volume 2 Star-Lord. That is arguably a better head sculpt, but that one still does do the job nonetheless. But hey, my point is, is I don't believe... I could be wrong in a month from now when we see the movie. I don't believe he does use the helmet in this movie. And if he doesn't, it does make sense. But if he does this figure is not going to be that good looking back at it. And then lastly, for comparisons with the Volume 3 Star-Lord, here we have some of the other members of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't have any of the other figures from this wave to compare him next to. I will compare him to those figures once I do reviews for them. But for now, here we have the Volume 2 Drax, the Infinity War 3-pack Rocket, and the Love and Thunder Teenage Groot. Now, this is what I mean. This blue on Drax's pants and the blue on Rocket would have been a way more accurate color for the costume. This is just way too light. It's almost, you know kind of cartoony. But for my final thoughts on this Volume 3 Star-Lord, I gotta be honest, I don't really know what to think of this figure. On paper, it's not that good, but you know, holding it and posing it around, it is quite a fun figure, but I just really can't excuse the reuse on this figure. It is a very poor and cheap move on Hasbro's part. I really wish they would have used brand new legs and just had this be pinless to match the other figures in this wave, especially because the whole point of the costumes in this movie and in this wave is that they are are all unified and they all match very nicely and they do to an extent but they're like pinless on this Drax's lower legs are pinless and then the rest or not pinless pinned and pinned and then the rest of the figures are pinless it's just it, I don't know it's it bothers me so I gotta be honest at the price point of around $35.99 or $32 I'm gonna give this figure a 7 out of 10 it's it's fine, but it is lacking accessories. You get an absolutely amazing likeness, one of the best likenesses in all of photoreal history in Hasbro, I gotta say. 
but the reuse really does bring this figure down for me. But if you like what you see here, I do believe you will enjoy it. It is a fun figure, like I mentioned, but I just don't know if I can really recommend it unless you want to get the whole team, especially because it doesn't even come with a builder figure piece. But that is all that I really have to say about that. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I have been Jagger Collector. He has been Star-Lord, and I will see you in my next video. But until then, bye guys.